morning everybody I'm a little bit late on today and as you can see there's full sun in my face and I have to do it that way otherwise I don't see oh for the morning <laughs> the whole week the kids are not getting up early today they get up super early and basically jeopardize my whole morning where I thought yes I have probably half an hour to watch my lens at least I could manage we could manage. My wife had to go to the doctor in the morning, but at least we could manage uh, get them some breakfast and then they were playing. So yeah, it wasn't. I got to watch some highlights, but uh, not all that I wanted. Um, but I saw everything from League A, B, C. So that's five games there, and I think I saw a highlight, a friendly highlight, which is a, uh, had a remarkable result. But let's start off with Nations League Group A2, I think it is, between Poland or A3. The letter, I'm confused with that, but uh, Poland against Portugal uh, was kind of a big clash in the sense that it really could shape the group. Uh, Poland got the draw in Italy, uh, Portugal beat Italy, so from that point of view, this was a big game because if Poland can win this, then Poland actually looks quite good uh, in advancing. But it at least gives gives them a good chance. A draw probably would have left the group wide open, and a win for Portugal is would have given Portugal full control and probably the group already. And that's what happened. Poland took actually an early lead. Um, the guy from Genoa. I don't recall his name uh, now, but um, he scored actually quite some Serie A goals. It's actually quite in in interesting how, how many Poles are actually playing in Italy. And uh, I think this is a big part uh, of the Polish backbone at the moment. So, yeah. So they got the early lead and I thought, well, that's going to make the group interesting. Um, <laughs> Andre Silva strikes right back. Um, and he is in amazing form and I cannot repeat how often, often enough how I am not happy that Milan did not keep him. I knew that I had a feeling that Andre Silva is gonna be a really good player. He will make his fame outside of Milan and that does hurt. Honestly, uh, although I'm very happy for him. I'm really happy for him because uh, I think this will give uh, Portugal life after Ronaldo. I think we can say it that way. So he equalizes and then uh, I think it was Bernardo Silva who actually dribbled past the goalkeeper and then the Polish defender uh, put it uh, himself into the net. Although I think Bernardo Silva would have put the made the empty. It was more that this was an own goal. Um, uh, that was some stupid defending in a way. Yeah, stupid. It's too harsh, but you know, uh, if you hit the ball, you better make it, uh, pull it out of the, uh, not into the goal, but you know, uh, shit like that. Can happen. So it's 2 1 for Portugal, uh, and from what I hear, uh, there was not much reaction coming uh, from Poland. And yeah, it was then, I think, Portugal scored the third one. 3 1. I know Portugal there was 3-1 and the game seemed over uh, but, Port but Poland pulled one back Poland Portugal po po a little bit too much um, Poland put one back uh, but however should not have given because before the cross came in the goal was very well taken I think it was Plajikovsky uh, goal was very well taken um, however the ball seemingly was already outside of the field before the cross came into Blaszczykowski. Uh, but yeah, it was a, was, was a really nice goal. Maybe give Poland some hope for the last 50 minutes to maybe get a draw out of this one, but Portugal hung on and are now in full control of this group. Uh, I think, you know, Italy and Poland have one point and Portugal has six points. And Poland has now at least, uh, they have scored three goals, Italy has only scored one goal, so it's gonna come down 
to the Poland Italy matchup I think um, in three days that's gonna be big uh, for who is gonna go down in League B and maybe this is a this is actually not maybe I think this is an absolute must win for Poland um, the other thing that speaks for Poland is that the, uh, they play Portugal in the very last game and by that time Portugal can have sealed the win already of the group so um, thinking about it it's a must win for Italy <laughs> I said it's a must win for Poland no it's a must win for Italy I think um, a draw will put Poland a little bit more in the driver's seat although uh, I think if it's a 2-2 draw then it's the advantage Italy um, that, but yeah, um, I think that um, that group we know who's. To, I think we know that Portugal will win it, and then it's really between Poland and Italy. And somehow my gut feeling tells me that it will be Italy going down. Honestly, uh, let's go to Group B, a League B, uh, a game between. Sweden and Russia in Kaliningrad. I think this was kind of a concession to the opponent to get a few Swedish fans in there. Uh, because Kaliningrad is very conveniently located for Swedes, I would assume. But then, of course, you need to get all the visa stuff for Russia, which might not be that straightforward. Anyway, um, it was a 0 0 draw, a uh, game that Russia largely dominated. But couldn't get much. But couldn't get much done. If you wanna go, then let me in, and you can go. <laughs> um, I think Tuba had a chance. Uh, Cherishev had, of course, a chance. I mean, those two are playing great. Uh, there was almost nothing from Sweden. Uh, Russia should have probably won this game, but no, they only managed a 0-0. So the first points for Sweden, Russia has 4 points, Turkey has 3. Um, still open. But of course, I think for Sweden, the loss at home to Turkey uh, hurts a lot. Um, also, when I said yesterday that I actually think that Sweden Russia is a bigger matchup than Poland against Portugal, I thought about the past, but if I think about the present, both uh, Sweden and Russia made it to the quarterfinals of the World Cup and Poland and Portugal were all home before that, so it was the bigger matchup. <laughs> Although it's League B, it's kind of weird, yeah. But yeah, that group, uh, I think this is one of the uh, more interesting League B groups for sure. Uh, and Russia seemingly looks in control and that's, I think that's a big thing to say. Now uh, let's go to League C. There were actually two groups where we had to play. Let, let, let's go to uh, Group C1. Those numbers I know now because I recorded the videos. I hope you saw the jersey reviews for League C1 and C2. Tonight you'll have C3 and tomorrow there will be C4, um, which of course was also playing yesterday. So League C1, it was Israel against Scotland. Um, and I'm watching Israel maybe a little bit more now that they have uh, a record international Andreas Herzog um, as team chef which to me is an absolute ridiculous appointment in a way um, starting from that he actually scored a vital goal against Israel in Israel uh, that already doesn't sit right then of course they have now the Austrian uh, Israel has Willy Hultensteiner who was kind of the sports director for the Austrian national team for the past 10 years until he got ousted which is one reason why I think Austria's soccer is moving a little bit backward instead of forward now Israel has him and if they have patience I think they will get something I'm just not sure that the appointment of Herzog was uh, all that happy but you know you gotta give the guy finally a chance he wanted to become a coach he wanted to become the Austrian national team coach everyone was kind of very skeptically around here including me 
uh, he worked under Klinsmann at the US national team, uh, was his co-trainer and also responsible for the under 21, where yeah, I don't think he did uh, that great, he also didn't do that great uh, with the Austrian under 20, 21 before that, but you know, maybe there is a career in international football for him and if he does well with Israel, I'd be all more happy for him. And then of course there's a Israeli Dabur uh, who plays for Salzburg and is scoring out of his mind there. So for that reason there's a uh, heightened, slightly heightened interest for Israel to me. And Israel was in a tough spot. I mean they lost two games, uh, you know, one to Albania. And then I think they were beaten quite badly by Northern Ireland, 3-0 or something like that. So it didn't start well and now they were playing against Scotland had actually a good chance to start the game off um, and then Scotland got a, what I thought was a very soft penalty. I had to watch this twice to see but um, yes there was maybe a little bit of a shove but I think it was way too little for a penalty. But yeah, Scotland got the uh, penalty and converted it. Uh, fortunately for Israel they got the equalizer uh, right before they have, I think they hit even the post before that. And then uh, they turned the match around, got a 2-1 and made it even 3-1 and there was no way back for Scotland. Um, actually, Jersey match, but this, was, was very, this one was very nice. The light blue and white of Israel against the yellow and navy of Scotland. I really liked that one. Speaking of Jersey matchups, uh, Poland-Portugal was as expected. Uh, however, the Russia-Sweden matchup, Russia already against Sweden in all yellow. That's it called. I think Sweden can. Russia could have played with white pants and Sweden with yellow, uh, with blue pants and no one would have minded that, honestly. So that was a really weird look. I think the Russia look in all red looks actually quite nice, but Sweden in all yellow uh, is not a good look. And yeah, speaking of all yellow, um, so in that group, uh, let's go back to C1. In that group now, everyone has won their home game. So uh, Israel flip-flop now Albania, very interesting group to watch. Um, really curious of how this will eventually pan out um, because uh, Scotland threw away a chance of taking control of that one. Okay and then uh, League C4 uh, we had Romania playing in Lithuania of course uh, both games I wanted to see the uh, Lithuania away jersey and the Montenegro away jersey hey, 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 hey. no I didn't get any of these they played in their home jersey respective home jerseys so I guess we're gonna keep waiting. Uh, let's start with Lithuania against Romania. Uh, Romania took an early lead. Lithuania tried to come uh, back, but I think there was not much happening. Uh, those highlights I didn't see with my full attention. I just saw that Lithuania uh, equalized in the 90th minute. And everyone thought this is gonna be uh, the first point for Lithuania. But nope. Romania gets a 95th uh, minute win. Um, was a nicely taken goal, gotta say that. And therefore, you have now Romania with the first win at five points. So all everyone looks. So Romania had already drawn to Montenegro and to Serbia. So all the eyes are now on um, Serb Montenegro playing at home against Serbia. And again. Uh, this is maybe one of the few Balkan rivalries where it's not as contentious because you know they were together. I think this is probably one of the least contested Balkan rivalries, funnily enough. But I might be wrong. If you're from Montenegro or Serbia, tell me how, how you guys get along. I actually have the feeling that if it wasn't for politics and all that, all of those people could get very well along with it. But there's some uh, nationalistic idiots that just need to mess things up. I honestly get that feeling because uh, around here, yeah, it's all politics, honestly. That's, but it's usually politics that messes things up. So yeah, Montenegro, Serbia. There was actually not much to say. Serbia got the early lead. Uh, through a penalty, I think. And Montenegro was trying but never really achieving much and Serbia, uh, towards the end of the game, uh, got the second goal and sealed the win. Serbia sits at seven points and probably will move on to League uh, B 
I really imagine them being the ones that can move up and deserve it also. I think Serbia is not a league C team. But Romania maybe a little bit more, but also Romania is also not that out of it, obviously. So yeah, uh, very, very interesting uh, group as well. Uh, I like actually the Montenegro home jerseys. They look classy. Gotta give it to Legea. Uh, they really made nice kids there. Uh, and then we have... Um, the Romania away kids I wanted to quickly mention I really wish that they didn't have just the blue two yellow stripes here maybe put a, make it yellow and blue put the other national color in there and I really think that you could make a yellow band with the Romanian flag in there that I think would have been the greatest thing to have just my personal opinion uh, if I would have made those kids uh, just about the kids, um, you will see when I, you watch my jersey reviews for National Team Jersey, I always call for the coat of arms out there and I actually think this is what should happen if you have a National Team Jersey, put, put the flag on a shield as a crest somehow if that's possible or make a coat of arms or something like that to give national identity. Uh, I don't like if uh, teams put the Federation logos on there. Maybe the one where it really would look weird is potentially Germany. Maybe even Brazil or so on. But you know, do something. I mean, Bra the Brazilian crest looks actually alright, but there are so many that are modern. I'm looking at you, Israel. I'm looking at you, Ireland. Although I think I look I like Ireland a tad better than Israel. Although they are virtually the same. Uh, Slovenia it doesn't do much for me. Um, so you know, you, there can be more done. I honestly think so. Um, to give the uh, jersey a little bit more, have some heraldic feature. Friendly games, yes. I should have probably watched Spain against Montenegro, uh, Bosnia. Simply for the reason, because I want to see how Bosnia is doing. I don't even know the result by now. I will check it right when I arrive. But the uh, one friend that I watched was France against uh, Iceland. And boy, this was a biggie. I, of course, France was not playing with the best uh, squad out there, but you know, there was a Griezmann, uh, there was probably also a um, uh, Pogba on there, I think. So I didn't see the lineups, but um, Iceland got a 2 0 lead. And then Mbappé kind of came on, and then Mbappé turns the game. Telling you everything uh, about his importance. I think he is probably meanwhile the best France player and on great form. So he um, came on, immediately got one of his signature runs, uh, shot at the goalkeeper, and uh, the goalkeeper deflected it to the defender and they went into goal, kind of a billiard goal. Then there was a penalty that was given. Uh, I actually like that the game was played in Gangon, uh, taking a little bit out of Paris. I think. Uh, France really has to do that. Um, it's a little bit like England always playing in Wembley. France very often plays the Stade de France. Yes, it's the, by far the biggest city in France, but especially friendless, you can move around a little bit. Even for Nations League, I would do that. Uh, but of course, they have really big name uh, um, opponents. So yeah, for that reason, I probably understand why, why they're doing it. So France only 2-2 against Iceland. Uh, the interesting thing is that Iceland hasn't won a game since January. That doesn't look good, honestly. Uh, I love my Iceland. I didn't know that they had such a bad uh, spell. And actually, they, I honestly say they played a great World Cup. They only got the point against uh, Argentina. Which in itself is a big uh, thing, but from what I saw, I mean, uh, the second half Nigeria outplayed Iceland, but from what you could tell, when uh, Venezuela uh, the hardest against Croatia, Iceland had enough chances to win that game and sent Argentina into misery. So, yeah, uh, 
was an interesting result, I thought, and kind of an eye opener, together with the comments of Pogba that he's tired, a little bit playing for France because you know he spent all his mental energy to get the World Cup, and now uh, there's kind of this emptiness after, which in a way I think is understandable. Uh, on the other side, it's not something you want to hear as a Frost fan, honestly, so I mm, don't know where to put this comment, to be frank with you, but yeah, it was at least an honest assessment and I don't want to make a, a big thing out of it, but I totally can understand it. Uh, if you saw Frost at the World Cup, they didn't play great, but they played super hyper concentrated. And I think this is where probably Deshaun might have just stepped down and let someone else take over. Uh, because I think he used probably every trick in the book to get the squad more, more, more motivated, to get them out of this funk after Euro 16. Um, and stay concentrated, stay focused at the World Cup and yeah they ended up winning it and I totally understand that you know now everything you've done it you've reached the peak you've reached the zenith uh, how much further can you go and of course the World Cup trophy is now put everywhere when France is playing yeah here's the World Cup look at it here's the trophy here's the trophy we won it uh, I think that does, this doesn't help things and yeah, I think this might be Germany's uh, chance to do something in that group. Um, they play France in uh, Paris uh, next Tuesday, which is probably the big matchup to look forward to uh, in the whole thing. Because Germany surely wants to redeem themselves in France as world champions, surely, you know, you don't want to get embarrassed. But let's see how the games are played. Well, uh, let, let me know what you thought. Sorry, I really didn't watch Spain against Bosnia. I didn't have the time for that. Literally didn't have the time. Uh, and I didn't watch any League D highlights, which I probably should too. I probably might do a whole League D roundup at one point. Because uh, League D uh, might not be the fanciest of things, but I really like that there is a League D that all these small nations can play each other. Uh, that to me is really something else. I'm looking forward to actually some matchups. I think Austria is playing today against Northern Ireland. We have two games with Croatia against England. That's probably the one that I want to watch. Uh, and with Belgium against Switzerland. So yeah, and after the corruption, potential match fixing scandal, um, money laundering in Belgium, I don't think it will have a big impact on the squad itself, but gonna look how this is developing. Let me know all your thoughts that you had watching the games yesterday. I hope you could watch some. I just couldn't. Uh, but I saw the highlights. Okay, let's quickly do that. I, of course, was completely wrong that Spain was playing Bosnia. No, Spain played Wales and I just watched the highlights. Super impressive. Within 30, 30 minutes, Spain was up by three goals uh, without Wales having any chance. Uh, I think Paco Alcacer made two. He's in uh, incredible form. Ramos made one. And then Mark Batra made it late for nothing. And Vox pulled one back. But Spain looks dangerous. Uh, I would say that at this very moment, Spain is probably the best national team around. And you wonder what they could have done at the World Cup. Uh, I would put them now really as favorite for the Nations League. I uh, cannot say much more than that. Yep. Uh, Bosnia played of course 0-0 against Turkey, so didn't watch those highlights. I saw the result. I also saw that Argentina won a game <laughs> again after a while, so it's also interesting to see. Again, um, tell me what you thought about all these games, whether you agree with me that Spain is the best team at the moment. Uh, they look scary. They absolutely look scary at the moment and messed World Cup, honestly. Yeah. Lopetegi. Let me know what you think about all these. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video, uh, even with the afterthought. And then uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. 
I will talk to you soon. Bye.